podcast. I'm Alex, one half of the Sober Experiment. And I'm Lisa, the other half of the Sober Experiment. How are you? I'm all right. I always laugh at that bit because I don't know why. How hard is it for us just to say that bit, our own name? Do you know what? I was editing a future podcast last night and the... I think we had about 12, I think I counted 12 full restarts for one reason or another. So there's the bits where you and me just laugh at each other doing hi and welcome to the sober, I can't even say it now, but anyway, you know what I mean? Is that, <laughs> but then in one part, you actually introduced somebody with a completely different name and didn't, <laughs> <laughs> there really is something quite wrong with the way that we do this. I don't know what's going on, but yeah, we did well. That was the first time then we've done good. It was. Normally we have to like look away from each other for that bit, just to get that bit right. <laughs> but we've done it. I'm really pleased. Can I just say, Lisa, your hair has just knocked about 10 years off you. You look great. Thanks, Alex. I'm feeling it. You know what? Um, I won't lie. After our meet yesterday, we met Liam from Wise Up. And we had a few pictures taken and I looked at the pictures afterwards and I was absolutely traumatised. One, that my dress added like 19 stone onto me. So that's now gone <laughs> to the charity shop. And I know it weren't the dress, it was the angle. But if people see that angle, then, well, it had to go. And then my hair again, I took a selfie and I was like, oh, something needs to be done. And we've been so busy that um, we've I've not really giving myself time to look after myself and one of my favorite quotes ever and people that know me will know this is you can't pour from an empty cup and there I am running around the world pop well I wish I was running around the world but uh, <laughs> running around everywhere like with nothing inside I've not even had time to have my own hair cut or do a facial or you know all these things that I recommend everybody does all the time so yeah I'm like I'm liking it myself Alex thanks <laughs> Do you know what? I think that's when you know you've got a real friend because you showed me that photo and I was like, you won't, you won't, you look lovely because you did actually look lovely in real life. So much so, you and me both ran through Debenhams, didn't we? Like topping up our... Um, yeah, and I felt quite nice. And but... you did look nice. And then afterwards you went, oh, no, no, look at it, please. And I just went, yeah, it's pretty bad, that. <laughs> it was awful. And obviously, you know, when you've just met someone for the first time, you can't go, can we take that again? And can you, can you get that lady to lift that camera a little bit higher up? And can you do this? So, yeah, it would just, but it, it's obviously given me the kick up the bum that I needed to You're go good. and sort myself out. So thank you. And so do you. You've coloured yours. I have. Mine's my usual colour, but it looks a bit darker this time. So, yeah, I'm feeling quite... I, li I like it darker, though. Yeah, well, I've done it because obviously I'm meeting a lot of people at the Mindful Drinking Festival this weekend for the same reasons you have, really. Pure vanity. Just want people to see the best side of me in terms of my material side. So, yeah, that's why. You look <laughs> absolutely beautiful and I'm absolutely gutted that I can't come. But I'm I know, Alex, come. that you will represent the sober experiment beautifully and I could think of nobody else to do it. Like... I could only think of one other person to do it. Oh, you. <laughs> no, honestly, I'm dead excited for you. I am going, I'm not going, but I am excited for you because like you're planning on meeting a few people there as well, aren't you? Well, yeah, well, we'll get it all added onto our story because actually tomorrow, and it is tomorrow, actually, I'm recording this now for tomorrow. Um, Lisa's going to play PA, so I'm going to be sending her photos and we'll get them up as fast as possible. So that should be quite good fun. No pressure, Lisa. You yeah, get to go pressure. around having fun and I get to upload the fun onto our Instagram story. Listen, it's only like when you went to the radio and I had to look at you through a glass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you did a really good job of that. <laughs> <laughs> and you will do a fabulous job of uploading photos. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we've had quite an interesting week. We've had quite an interesting two weeks. Um, and... This podcast was going to just be about you and me talking, wasn't it? But then we actually interviewed Karolina Jakrowalska from Euphoric Alcohol Free. Um, she's got a Facebook group. She's also a transformation and life coach. And it was that inspirational that we have just put it in now. Also, we think it's really relevant right now while people are doing dry January because she discusses quite a bit in it about how you tell people 
and and how it makes you feel and your friendship circles and we thought it was really relevant didn't we yeah it's um i i loved it i love talking to her i think oh she just is so positive and inspirational and well you're going to hear it in a minute but i just think she's going to help so many people i loved it and you know i agreed with literally everything she says and a lot of it is what i try and say to people but she just says it's so much better <laughs> i'm pretty sure you actually said that to her although i think you say it fairly well yourself to be honest with you but you know she did say it really lovely and she's just got such a calming way with her she was just so inspirational lisa yeah, she's amazing. if i wasn't already sober i would go sober after listening to you and i agree she was just absolutely brilliant Yes, she was. She was. And I can't wait for everybody to listen to it. So, um, yeah, we'll be seeing you shortly. Um, but in the meantime, take a listen to Carolina. She's wonderful. Enjoy. So, hi, Carolina. Thank you for joining us on our podcast. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here today. It's lovely to actually have you on finally because we've been following you for a while and um, I'm actually a member of your group and you're doing some wonderful, wonderful things. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the Carolina before um, you stopped drinking? So the beginning of your journey or prior to that, please. Sure. So um, I like to always preface by saying that when I was a lot younger, when I was in college and in grad school, I drank a lot. You know, I partied a lot. I stayed out late a lot. You know, drinking was something that I did most nights. But around the age of maybe 24, 25, I was like, okay, I need to grow up. I need to be an adult. I can't keep doing this to myself. I can't, you know, I have to wake up for a job. I can't be hung over. And so I really like to think that, um, I said, I call this moderation illusion. And I was basically like thinking to myself, well, as long as I just drink on the weekends, like, you know, I can handle this, I can do this. So my mind was, um, already really thinking about drinking ever since I was 25. So I started to have all these rules around it, you know, no drinking during the weekday, you know, staying out till bars till 2 a.m. And I thought I was doing the adult thing. But the thing that drove me nuts is it almost didn't matter what rules I had or how much I tried to limit and make boundaries around my drinking, it was still making me miserable. You know, of course I had the nights when I drank way more than I wanted to. You know, I set out maybe to have two drinks and I went way over that. Or maybe I went to a party or some kind of dinner event or, you know, just any kind of usual casual socializing event. And I just drank way more than I wanted to. I wanted to pace myself. I wanted to be like a dignified, graceful adult. And yet it just completely got away from me. And then there were the times that you know, maybe I did stick within my limits, but I still woke up the next morning feeling like absolute shit. Like it was either it completely ruined my sleep or I still felt like that I um, acted outside of the integrity that I was holding up, the image I had of myself and who I wanted to be. I felt like anytime I had alcohol, I just wasn't that person anymore. And I said things that I later regretted or I, you know, was too being too self-conscious or insecure. So it really got to this point where it just didn't matter what I did. It didn't matter when I drank too much or when I drank too little. Alcohol was not making me feel like my best self no matter what. So it took me years to realize this. And it took me years to realize that maybe, you know, it wasn't a matter of toying with my equations and drinking less or doing these rules or that rules. Maybe I might just be happier if I didn't drink at all. And so in January of 2018, um, I did dry January and, um, you know, honestly, I was looking for an excuse to, um, try something like this for such a long time. And what I mean is that an excuse is that dry January is such a socially kind of acceptable reason to stop drinking for that moment. And it was like, it was honestly a huge relief. Like, finally I can take 31 days off drinking you know, if anyone asks me about it, I can talk about dry January. I was really excited to do it. That's amazing. A lot of people do start with dry January. And I know what you mean about it being soci sociably accepted around that time. So when you finished dry January and thought, I'm going to go forward with this, I'm going to go into February. Was there anything that you found challenging at that time to begin with? Have you faced any hurdles or did you stumble at all? And if you did, how, how did you overcome that? 
Yeah. So basically with the end of dry January, you know, I really fell in love with the new lifestyle. I fell in love with how I was sleeping and feeling and even just the new activities I was doing, you know, like drinking takes up so much time. And now I was playing board games and I was hanging out with my niece more often. I was just doing things that, you know, maybe you did when you're a kid and I kind of like were off my radar. Um, but my mindset wasn't there yet. My mindset was, well, normal adults drink alcohol, so I'm going to have to go back. Like I just completely was convinced that that was the only route to take still. Um, so I did drink again in February, but now with this heightened awareness, every single time I drink in February was horrible. You know, sometimes one night I drank more than I wanted to. And of that was so, because I thought I had fixed my relationship with alcohol. And then other nights I drank again, exactly how much I wanted to. And the disparity with how I felt compared to how I thought I was going to feel from alcohol was just so far off. You know, I had, I remember having two drinks one night and all of a sudden it ruined my mood. I was frustrated. I was starting little fights with my husband. I was feeling completely ungracious compared to like the appreciation that I could feel my sober self having. And so, um, after my last drinking episode in February, I was just, again, like, you know what? I'm really excited to go back to not drinking again. I committed to another 30-day period. And this was the time that the 30 days morphed into, you know, forever for me. Um, and that time I did it very differently. Instead of just focusing on the behavior of not drinking, I actually dived really deep into the sober sphere, the sober world. I dived deep into learning about the science of alcohol into learning about what's behind my habit and my cravings and my underlying beliefs about why I thought I needed it to be normal or to fit in or to just have it, you know, in my life. Um, I started reading all the books. I started listening to podcasts. I started to talk about it and write about it and really start really unraveling this habit that I had been putting, you know, like in a secret chest under my bed for so long. And I was finally getting to a point where I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to think about it. And I wanted to gain a lot of insights and introspection about myself through my journey of kind of unraveling and discovering it. And so that, that would made the whole difference in the world and completely shifted my mindset around drinking. So you just touched ever so slightly there on um, like social aspects of it. Mm -hmm. What's the drinking culture like where you are is my first part of the question. <laughs> and my second part of the question is, did you have any support from groups as in actual physical groups or people that were also sober? Yeah. So I live in San Diego, California. Um, and so we're very, let's say healthy here. And it's, it's very interesting, this dichotomy, because it's very healthy here. People are into yoga and drinking green juice and going to cycling classes and paddle boarding, all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, we're also the craft beer capital of the world. So you're supposed to have it all. You're supposed to be healthy during the day and then Wouldn't go that out and drink be wonderful. <laughs> and drink all the craft beer at night. And for me, there was actually like this huge part of feeling like a failure. Like I was that healthy individual, you know, I did eat my fruits and vegetables. I did work out. And in this giant picture that I was being sold that I needed to do the healthy stuff and go out and drink and, and, you know, have all this fun. I was like, I can't make it work. Like when I drink, I don't, I wake up and I don't want to do anything healthy. I feel horrible. Like I felt like I was doing something wrong because I couldn't adhere to this picture, this glamorized picture we have about having it all. And it really wasn't until, you know, this journey that I was like, you know what, this is BS. There isn't having it all with alcohol. Alcohol is a poison. It is going to make you feel bad the next day. It's going to ruin your sleep. It's going to make you, you know, fall off the wagon in your diet or your exercise plan. Um, so that being said, yes, San Diego does have quite a heavy drinking culture, but it's very interesting because you'll meet those people who really drinking is kind of the one incongruency in our otherwise very healthy lifestyle. So it's kind of strange. And I hope We'll have a lot more awakenings and a lot more awareness around it in the future. I think that's where we're going. Um, but it's definitely, you know, I was the first in my social group and my friends who started talking, talking openly about alcohol and my decision to like, you know, try my life without it. So it was definitely something new for me. Um, and then the second part of your question was, yes, definitely I needed social groups. So at first, because I was my, I was the first one I knew going through this. I relied heavily on what was online. So I joined private Facebook groups on, on online. 
Um, and I would highly recommend anyone do that because, you know, for so long, I think we were made to believe that we're the only ones going through this. Something's wrong with us. We're an anomaly. No one else is, you know, feeling this way. And you join these groups and it's just a huge sigh of relief. You know, of course, other people are on this journey as well as you, you know, like most people actually have a complicated relationship with alcohol and statistics are showing us that. And when you start to, you know, instead of like covering up the parts of you that you're embarrassed about or insecure about, you start to actually accept yourself. You start to feel pride and ownership of your story and you start to forgive yourself. So I think even joining these groups is a, a great process to get to a place where you don't feel like there's something wrong with you. You do accept your experience and you're ready to forgive yourself and move on to bigger and better. And that's another thing that these groups do too, is that you see people, you know, like waking up and defying their past stories and they're challenging themselves to new amazing things they've never done before. Like maybe running a half marathon or writing a book. And you're like, Hey, like I could do that. I could be, I could be that person. I could hit a hundred days. I could hit 200 days. And I think it just keeps like that, like drive to want to even compete with those people and be inspired by them. It's super cool. Um, after a few months though, of course, I think I needed the real support in real life. And just to have someone to like, be able to, to honestly like geek out about this. Cause I was like, I love talking <laughs> about it as well. Um, so I was looking for, you know, some kind of meetups in San Diego and I was so lucky, um, within maybe four months sober, I found a meetup that would, had just launched in San Diego's for alcohol free women. And then at the very first meeting, I met who became one of my best friends today. And I host a podcast together and we, you know, love and support each other today. But it all started with that first meetup because, you know, I know, I know I needed people in the real life and real world um, to kind of relate to and share this journey with. Without sounding like a stalker, is this the friend you went to the vineyards with? Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's just so nice, like you said, to have real life people to talk about it with. Because when you do first stop drinking and you start realising how amazing it is and how you've been sold this lie, like you said, um, where you're from, you know, the craft beers, they don't have drunk people advertising them craft beers, do they? It's all kind of, <laughs> and yeah, it's models. all actors, models, and they're making up this um, lifestyle. But to actually talk to real life people, about all the amazing benefits because I think I don't know um what have your friends and family been like yeah so um when I first opened up it was honestly such a relief that a lot of my friends related to me a lot of my friends had the very same experiences you know who doesn't wake up and hate feeling hungover like yeah. who <laughs> who doesn't hate that experience who doesn't like not like themselves when they drink too much who doesn't you know, go through these kinds of things and not, not everyone's as aware of them or not much people give them that much thought, but I think women in particularly do. I think we have um, a lot more shame that we feel when we don't live our lives in alignment with the values that we have, you know, and when you value something like grace or well-being or self as a dignified woman, you know, and then alcohol makes you act in you know, in out of alignment with those things, like we feel that deep pain, I think. So I definitely related to a lot of women who knew exactly what I was talking about. Some of them themselves have decided to stop drinking. Some are just, you know, drinking less or sober curious, but it was so nice to just get to a place where we could talk about the elephant in the room and that I was not the only one going through this. And the people who have a quote unquote healthy relationship with alcohol were actually the minority. <laughs> In yeah, state, definitely. Right? <laughs> um, and then I honestly, I think I was very lucky. My my friends and family and, and spouse came very much to support me. You know, it was definitely a big change with my spouse. Like for sure, we drank together. That's what we did as a pastime. And um, it was a slow, you know, evolution of thought for, for, you know, us to completely embrace the alcohol-free lifestyle together. And so I always, I always recommend and suggest that it definitely takes a lot of time to get other people on board because just think of how long it took you to evolve to the place you are today where you're starting to question, you know, alcohol. It might take some time for the people around you to kind of get on board. Um, but if they're worth, you know, having in your life, it's worth just sharing how much happier you're feeling, how much better you're feeling, how much more confident, vibrant, 
you know, if you have children, how much better you're able to mom or dad to them because of that. And hopefully slowly, but surely the people around you will come to see that and want the best for you. Yeah, I think, I think you're right about all of those things. And in what you've done just since you stopped drinking in a relatively short amount of time. So you've got this amazing Facebook group that people can join and you're always on there doing lives and you're so engaging and you're just so knowledgeable and then you're coaching as well. So tell us a little bit about that and also how people can find you. Oh, thank you so much. It's so sweet of you to say. So yes, I run, um, it's called Euphoric Alcohol Free. And I, I named it that because, you know, I always had these ideas about some grim, sad, sober. <laughs> and when I went on my own, you know, alcohol free experiment, it was nothing like that. It was absolutely nothing like that. And when you can kind of step outside of those limiting stories that you have to have alcohol to have fun or relax or, you know, take yourself someplace that you don't believe you can't go on your own, like you surpass these limiting beliefs and you discover, I think the greatest joy in your own confidence, in your own ability to have fun, in your own, you know, just new fresh perspective on life with the energy that you have and the greater health and all the amazing benefits that just, just physically happens when you remove a toxin from your life. So I was, you know, so excited about what I was going through. I knew that I wanted to share this with the world. Um, I started Euphoric Alcohol Free, which to me is just a space for anyone to come and question the role of alcohol in their lives. Um, and it's especially, I love to talk about that gray area drinking that so many people fall into because, I mean, we all know maybe the, the most severe kind of case of a problem with drinking. We've heard of that story. And there's, there's so many resources out there today, whether that's AA or rehab or other kind of programs that deal with that. What about all those people in the middle? What about the people who are you know, not maybe showing those red flags in their life, but they're thinking these same thoughts. They have the worries and the concerns. You know, I know how isolating it felt because I couldn't name the problem. You know, I knew, I knew that I wasn't drinking in a way that, you know, you had to have an intervention with me and, you know, send me off to rehab. I knew that. So what was it then? What was it? And I couldn't name it. And that made me feel so isolated and alone. So euphoric is really a space for those gray area drinkers and we just celebrate, you know, what life can look like without alcohol. Um, you know, I do courses to help people completely remove their desires to drink and find like who they could be without alcohol. Because I think that's the one exciting thing. Um, when you no longer like dim your light, when you no longer are held back by conformity and these bad habits and these limiting beliefs, like you can aspire to greatness. You can aspire to those dreams you had when you were a little child. You could do anything you set your mind to. And I think, and most people that I've seen go through this journey just prove that to be true. You know, people launch businesses, they go out and do their own nonprofits, they become leaders, they run races, they, they do the things that they always wanted to do because alcohol is no longer taking away their energy and their time and just the shine and the vibrancy that we have for life. Um, of course, I also do coaching one-on-one -on -one, and I have a Facebook community. I'd love for you to join. It's all called Euphoric Alcohol Free. And I, I do a blog and I do a podcast where my friend Danielle, as I've mentioned before, we talk about how amazing life is without alcohol. And, you know, everything that I do, I think I'm just trying to talk to that past version of me, that past version of me that thought I was so alone and that, you know, not drinking alcohol was somehow a punishment and that I would be kind of stigmatized and thought of as boring in society. And just the sobriety couldn't be further from the truth. It's the most empowering, exciting lifestyle I think there is. Um, you know, and it really, I think, gets you when you're in a place where you're ready to hear your inner guide and be authentic with yourself without relying on a crutch outside of you you get down to what you really want to do in this world. And how much more exciting is that? You know what? Honestly, if I wasn't sober after listening to you, I, I want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Back to day one. No, no. Yes, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, you've honestly, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you're so positive. I mean, you are like Lisa's mirror because <laughs> it's like listening to, it is, it's just like listening to you all over again. It is. <laughs> Because um, you've got to remember, as I told you earlier before we came onto the podcast, um, 
Lisa really was my support and my strength. So I guess in a way, even though we've been friends for all our life, it's very similar to kind of you finding your friend and setting up the podcast because we would have never done this. And, it, you know, we'd have had nothing to talk about for a start because we'd have been repeating our stories like drunk people do. <laughs> It was getting that way. <laughs> so did I read somewhere that you actually had some interaction with Tony Robbins or? <laughs> so I love one of the, one of the greatest benefits I think to me when you stop and you introspect is that you commit to your own growth. And I think for so long drinking stunts us, right? It's a way that we escape. It's a way that we turn off. It's a way that we just, numb and stop the process of the hard stuff and growing through it and growing ourselves beyond our comfort zones so that we can achieve the things that like we don't even want to admit we want deep down you know our someday goals um so i value personal growth so much it's been such a journey for me i'm absolutely obsessed i love striving to be a better version of myself and to be honest like you never get there. The journey is what the beautiful thing is. And it's all a matter of just committing every day and making the progress. It's not committing to being perfect or anything like that. So people like Tony Robbins have been a big influence on me. Um, a lot of other, I think, personal development type heroes that we have out there. But I do have a um, Tony Robbins coach. So I work with a Tony Robbins coach um, almost every week. And it's been such a transformational process to just continue releasing those limiting beliefs that are holding me back, continue stepping into who I really want to be and, and who I really want to become and pushing those limits, you know, because when you want to do something great in this world, like you need to be confident, you need to believe that you're worthy of it. And I think we're so conditioned, whether it's from society or our own inner critics, to just play small and not believe in ourselves and just have these limiting views of what we can do and who we can become. So I think doing the work of investing in yourself and doing the personal growth is super, super worthwhile. Um, and I also go to conferences and I'm really excited in July, I'll be going to a Tony Robbins conference. So oh, wow. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. So what's next for you? Because as you say, it's a journey. It's not, it never really ends, but Every day, every week, I seem to see something new from you, um, something exciting. So what, what's your kind of future journey looking like at the moment? Yeah, so I'm really looking, you know, I started about a year and a half ago, and I think that was my beginner stage. And I had a lot to learn, and I had, you know, I still always have a lot to learn. <laughs> but I really just stood all in and just tried to soak up all I could to learn how to do this, how to share you know, a message, a movement with the world, you know, how to like really understand how to transform and grow beyond an alcohol habit. And I'm ready now to take this to the next level and keep growing that message and really scale, um, really move my platform and, and this message out to more people who need it. Um, I'm also really excited at the very end of this year in December, I'll be hosting a retreat in Bali which has been on my bucket list for years. I've been writing go on a retreat in Bali for years in my journal. And I can't believe I get the opportunity myself to lead a group of incredible women who want to do this personal growth work, who are over happy hour and ready to go on to bigger and better things with their lives. So that's really exciting for me. That is really exciting. That's on my list. Oh, it, okay. Yeah, it is. It's been on my list. Slow your twins. Long. Transparency twins. <laughs> I've got to wait till my my youngest gets a little bit older so I can pop off to Bali. <laughs> but yeah. So before we finish, um, is there anything? Well, two things. Is there anything else that you want to tell us about that we haven't asked you about? And also, can you give us just a quick outline of where exactly how people can find you? So like the the websites, the podcast name, and so on. Yeah. So I just want to say that. So many of us start this journey with this feeling of unease and embarrassment, and we just think of this as an issue that needs to be handled. And yet, I think that this is like the beginning of your awakening. When you deal with alcohol and you start asking yourself the qu tough questions, you know, is this habit making me happy? Is this how I really want to live my life? You are doing what most people won't do. 
you are asking the brave questions and getting super introspective. It's like the wake up call, you know, that you needed. And when you start to unravel that maybe alcohol doesn't serve you and start to find confidence and joy and a new lifestyle, you really start to question the status quo in any area of your life. Because I think for so long, we put up with good enough. We put up with the status quo. We put up with mediocrity. And when you say no more to something like alcohol, like you start to really start questioning, you know, what else am I settling for? What other ways am I limiting my life? What other dreams have I stopped dreaming? What other things do I just put up with that really aren't making me happy? And that could be a job, that could be a relationship, that could be, you know, any number of ways that we kind of aren't living our life to the fullest in a specific arena in our lives. And I think that's just so, so exciting. So when you're here, you know, wishing that you could drink normally or, you know, not have this issue, like you're, you're thinking about it the wrong way because this is really the path towards the greatest self-discovery of your whole life. And you're only going to keep growing and you're only going to keep aligning to the person who you're meant to become. Secondly, where to find me? So my website is www.euphoricaf.com. You'll find the blog and the programs and the podcast all there. I also do mocktail recipes and just ideas for other non-alcoholic drinks. So I really want to just form a community and a movement around this lifestyle that embodies all facets of it and give people, you know, whatever tool they need, whether they like to listen to a podcast or read a blog or do a deep dive with a program. You know, I did programs when I started my journey and I continue to do programs in other areas of my life. And I love it because sometimes you just need that commitment and that investment even in yourself to be like, I'm going to grow in this area. I'm going to learn with a teacher. I absolutely love that. On Instagram, you can find me at euphoric.af and then Facebook, euphoric alcohol free. So I'm sure if you Google that, you'll find that anywhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd really love to come in and, and join and listen to the podcast anytime, join the community. Uh, we do lives, we do questions, you know, any person at any stage of their journey is welcome. I think it's just amazing. And I think, you know, you've just shown how much you can actually do when you do something like just stop drinking. And, you know, one of the questions we get asked a lot is, I'm bored. What do you do when you're bored? And I'm like, just listen to this podcast. There's a billion things you can be doing. So yeah, you've just been a breath of fresh air. I've really, really enjoyed speaking to you. Oh, thank, thank you too. so much. And you know, I love that question about being bored too, because the, here's the thing is that I think we're so used to as drinkers going for immediate gratification and going for something externally to entertain us, right? I mean, there's nothing as easy as drinking and then putting fireworks in your brain artificially, right? Yeah. And when you stop, you have to really use your own imagination to deal with boredom. And here's the thing, when you start doing that, you start to get creative and you start to really, you know, work on the internal and stimulus that your brain needs. And that's where podcasts like this are created, right? This is yeah. where amazing things come together, where you build and you create and you write and you do stuff that is meant to make a difference in this world. Like we are meant to feel bored sometimes so that you can go on yeah. and create the beautiful things you're supposed to create. I'm laughing because we've literally put a post on today <laughs> saying them exact words. <laughs> but um, yeah, you just have such a lovely way of putting it. I wish I could, because I know exactly what you mean. I feel you and I know it and you, you just say it better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> You're just a massive inspiration and I think lots of people who listen to our podcast are going to really, really enjoy this episode. Oh, well, thank you. It's such an honor to talk to you two ladies, and I really, really appreciate the opportunity. Oh, it's been a pleasure having you on. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Speak to you soon. Bye. We really hope you enjoyed that as much as we did, and it gives you lots of inspiration through dry January and beyond. If you don't already follow her or you're not already in a Facebook group, please look her up on Instagram and follow her because she's absolutely lovely and so genuine. A group's lovely as well, isn't it, Alex? Um, she does lots of live. Yeah, she does. She goes in live and she does Q&As and she's just, she's just so passionate about being sober and about living a sober lifestyle. Genuinely passionate and wants to help people. She's absolutely worth a follow. I'm still in her group because I just love it. 
Oh, brilliant. And next time, um, we've got the lovely Millie Gooch, founder of Sober Girl Society with us. Now, we recorded this a while back, didn't we? We did, I think it was before Christmas, was before Christmas, but um, it, I remember how excited we were during and after that conversation because it was just fantastic, wasn't it? Lots of juicy topics in there like sober sex and sober socialising. Yeah, it's brilliant. And I know she touches as well on depression and anxiety. And after we had that chat with Millie, it really, really made me think about my own life in lots of ways really I think it's it's really interesting it's a good one and I think it's something to look forward to Did, didn't you just after that one have um, an episode of the pause <laughs> yeah yeah which I don't want to scare people to not listen to the next episode because it's amazing but just after that when I say it made me reevaluate things it really did and I went on a bit of a day for for quite a while I, yeah it, I think yeah. that was two things Lisa I think one you was due a downer because you've been on a massive high for ages two she touched on some quite poignant subjects that really hit home and I think and also it was December and we know how you feel about December <laughs> yeah don't talk to me in December anybody <laughs> <laughs> Even you, Millie. <laughs> you know, it was it was lovely and I really enjoyed speaking to her. I just think she's so refreshing. She does an amazing thing for sobriety. You know, her Instagram page is so inspiring. And yeah, it's it's brilliant. It's lovely. And I think everyone's gonna listen to it. But yeah, don't speak to me in December. I think was it um who did we have an interview with in December? And I was dreading it coming out because it had been recorded. It was Janie Lee Grace. And when it came out, it was just, look, I kept telling you anyway, like I always do. No, you won't feel like that. You won't feel like that. But when, when you'd listen to it afterwards, you thought, oh no, it wasn't actually that bad. But oh, you... I was so relieved when it came out because I was absolutely dreading it. And you was like, it's coming out soon. And I thought, and I thought, well, I'm not going to share it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really yes. even want to let anybody know it was out. <laughs> You saw it as a threat when I was saying it's coming out soon. You know, oh no! <laughs> yeah, I was, I, I was proper scared, but you know what? It was really lovely. So if anybody's not heard it, it's Janie actually interviewing us, and it, it was loads of fun. We enjoyed it, yeah, and I think like my anxiety just took over, thinking I'd said things that I hadn't. And yeah, it's really good though. And if she had said them, they were edited out and Janie did a great job. So look, we don't worry about it. Yeah, I think that's what happened, really. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we'll see you all soon. And thanks again for listening. Bye. Yeah, thank you so much. Bye. Bye.